why do we dive in Scotland? Because Scotland's got Scotland's got very varied. It's got nice scenery. Scuba diving in Scotland has progressed over the past century. Commercial scuba diving in Scotland came about in 1953 and was later named Scotsack, almost a century later after Mr William Edward Newton, who was a British officer of patents in 1838, who invented the surface demand valve, and Dr Manuel Theodore invented the twin hose demand regulator. But Mr Newton had the chance to test out his surface demand valve during the demonstration. The demonstration was limited to 30 minutes because of the dive, as it was in cold water without a dry suit or diving suit, as it wasn't invented. The equipment and technology progressed and self-contained regulators came about in the 1860s by, the, by a French mining engineer, Bennett Requerel, who in, helped design the self-contained and built the first contained breathing apparatus, which had a backpack cylinder that was supplied air through the first demand regulator then it was commercialised in 1865. The idea for the scuba diving gear was originally designed for miners to avoid being drowned in flooded mines. Now, um, can you tell us what kind of equipment do you need to dive as an expensive hobby? Are you going to kind of show us some things about it and that? Uh, yeah. Some things about your equipment? I can show you, yep. Yeah. Um, first of all, it can be quite expensive if anyone that tells you diving is cheap. You're not telling the truth. It's one of these things that takes a bit of money to get into. Main things being suits um, and your main aqualong uh, equipment. Your basic aqualong is made up of um, your tank, which is full of compressed air. Um, you also have a jacket attached to that, which is mounted on your back, and that also acts as a buoyancy device. We call that a BCD buoyancy control device. On the top of your tank, you'll have a set of regulators attached. These regulators change the pressure in the tank to ambient air that we can breathe. Attached to the regulators, we have two breath uh, sets of breathing apparatus, a gauge, um, certain inflation uh, hoses for the BCD, and if you are in cold water, for your dry suit. Is there a difference in the, the gear you use here than abroad? The basic gear, as in the Aqualung, is the same. It's the same. But for thermal differences, so if you're diving in hot water, we would use a, a semi-dry suit or a wet suit, which uh, uses the water to uh, maintain a thermal temperature. But in uh, Scottish waters and cold waters around the world, we use what we call a dry suit, which keeps you 100% dry. And then we would use a thermal jacket um, or fully full body cover um, to keep that thermal temperature. Um, who governs Scottish scuba diving? And can you tell us something about it? Scuba diving in Scotland is governed by the Scottish Sub Aqua Club. The Scottish Sub Aqua Club was formed in 1953. Uh, by a group of um, sort of like-minded scuba divers who sort of started out in the Govan area. Uh, since 1953, there are over 70 scuba diving clubs in Scotland and over 1,400 uh, dive members within Scotsac. So has it grown as the years go on? Yeah, it definitely has grown, yeah, and it's still growing in that, yeah. We had a club of three members at one time and we're up to 20 members and that now, so I would think if you average sort of 70 clubs with 1,400 members, you're probably talking 20 members roughly per club. What about female membership? Is that getting strong? Um, yeah, some clubs, depending on where they are and how many female members tend to attract more female uh, members. One of our um, early members was a, was, a, was a female, but since then we've not really had too many. But at this moment in time, we've got about three female members out of 20 members in the club. So it's still a fairly male-orientated sport. Andrew, is there a certain age that you have to be before you can dive? Uh, yes, all, different agencies set different um, ages uh, for starting diving. For, uh, for um, Scotsack, you need to be 14 to dive um, as a minimum, uh, although there is a challenge for 14 year olds diving in Scotland because the gear that we have to use up here is quite heavy um, and only a, only a very small number of people would start diving in Scotland at that age. Uh, it's a bit easier diving in warmer waters if you're young. Is there any kind of disabilities that they have to overcome before they even go into the water? There are some medical reasons why you're not able to dive for fear that the symptoms of the condition could come on underwater. Um, those would include uh, epilepsy or perhaps diabetes if you had problems with uh, low blood sugars. Um, 
but the being underwater uh, makes you weightless and that overcomes a lot of physical disabilities you know, if you have pain in your joints and muscles being in the water and being weightless can actually make that feel better. There's plenty of wrecks running about Scottish waters I mean east coast west coast if you want to go up to Scapa Flow and dive in Orkney the German high seas fleet for the first world war was scuttled in Scapa Flow and the club have been up there a couple of times over the last uh, few years and, and dived the German high seas fleet. Um, a lot of our diving is done in sea locks in the west of Scotland. Uh, they're a particularly good place to dive because they're protected from the worst of the weather so we don't get the high waves and strong currents that you would in offshore diving in the rest of the UK. So we can dive pretty much all year round. Uh, people are often surprised when we tell them that there's almost as much to see under the waters around Scotland as there is in some of the more exotic destinations that people typically associate with diving. Scotland has things that people would perhaps only expect in warmer countries. So we have corals, we have many sea anemones, uh, we have fish life, um, and they're all there to be seen. But we also have some amazing megafauna in Scotland. Um, I've dived with seals and I've dived with basking sharks, the second largest fish in the world. Um, and those encounters have been on a par with anything that you could uh, see or expect to experience in other parts of the world. The most common causes of death in scuba diving across the world is decompression sickness, recognised as a problem for many divers. It was first documented in 1841. Scuba diving is a dangerous sport, um, don't let anybody kid you on, it's a bit like people going mountaineering, there's got to be a bit of excitement in that, there, there was an excitement then people wouldn't do it. It's all down to training, we, we take our time, we go at the trainees pace, we do our training in the pool, take them as far in the pool as we can take them before we then take them to open water, shallow open water run them through that before we move on to deeper water and different other sort of qualifications. But to put it into, into perspective, there's probably more chance of you being injured driving to the dive site than there is actually scuba diving. But it is fair to note that it's that it is a dangerous sport. There's no point getting into it thinking that there's no chance of danger. There's always chance. We try to limit it in the training that you get. Um, but you need to make people aware that it is, it is dangerous. But... The enjoyment you get out of the sport outweighs the danger 100 times over. We've never had any life-threatening situations on club dives. However, uh, the club was on holiday in Malta uh, last year. And when we were there on a wreck uh, down at about 25 metres under the water, we came across a, a Polish man who had virtually run out of the air in his tank. Um, this should only ever happen because people haven't been paying close attention to their own equipment uh, and we had to rescue him back to the surface, uh, otherwise he surely would have drowned at and that time. Uh, did you do that? Did you have puffs each? Or? Uh, no, so all of our equipment has a spare regulator. The one that we breathe from, there's a spare regulator for uh, the use of your partner under the water. Uh, if they run out of air or have an equipment problem. So we, we can um, give them one regulator and we breathe from the other. It does mean that as you're both breathing from the same tank, you will get through your air a lot quicker. So generally speaking, if you have to do that, the plan is to immediately start heading back towards the surface and safety.